verse 200. The insight of the wise who move about in the realm of imagelessness is pure, is born of the triple emancipation, is released from birth and destruction. So the insight of the wise. This is the enlightenment practitioner who's successfully practicing. They're in touch with how things are. They're in touch with the reality of pure being. They're not getting sucked in to the vortex of appearances. They're not emotionally investing in it. They're not believing in the backstory, the backstory concerning these appearances to the effect that it's an external world which has always been there. They're not living according to the backstory of being an individual with a particular personal history. They're free of that. They're free of it. The world and their personal psychology become like a mosquito is to the elephant. And this realm of imagelessness, video 18 is about imagelessness by the way, this realm of imagelessness is pure, is born of the triple emancipation is released from birth and destruction. And rather than look at these three aspects individually, I think there's a direct correlation with verse 202. We were told that the triple existence is transitory, empty, devoid of the ego and what belongs to it. Thus I teach the doctrine of generality to the Shravakas. And the Shravikas are the ones that study the teachings. They're in contrast to the sons of the victorious one, who are mentioned in verse 201. So we'll look, we'll look at that one as well. Verse 201 tells us that transcendental knowledge, this is the insight of the wise, is deep, exalted, far-reaching, and perceives all the Buddha countries. This I teach for the sons of the victorious one. For the Sravakas I teach transitoriness. So I want to look at these three verses all together. So this transcendental knowledge is deep, exalted, far-reaching. I've said many times before this insight what we do as enlightenment practitioners, it needs to be appreciated. It's so easy to dismiss because it's so subtle. It's so subtle. It, it is also very simple. It is very obvious. It's also very easy to dismiss. I still have the habit of doing this. I've done all these videos a lot of the time. I don't think anything of them. Sometimes I can't be bothered preparing them for upload. I don't think they're of any worth. It's me talking rather boringly. This is how I think about my own videos much of the time. But whenever I do get round to preparing them, recording them, editing them, I think Yes, yes, 
There's something very important here. Somebody made a very nice comment recently about through me the universe is waking them up. What a wonderful comment. But this is how I feel about these texts. These texts. These texts. Like the Lankavatara Sutra. Yoga Vasishta. Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. They're the universe giving us a poke. Saying, hey, wake up. Wake up to the reality of your own being. Wake up to the true picture. Stop investing in all the nonsense. So yes, these teachings are deep. They're fundamental. They're exalted. They need to be appreciated. I sometimes feel, and I don't think it's hubris, I think it's just when I appreciate the true import of these teachings, I should be made president of the world in an honorary capacity, of course. I don't want to be running it, but just out of appreciation. I don't particularly want to be president of the world, but uh, I think these teachings, the teachings that I've just mentioned, they are utterly amazing. They are reality shattering. We need to dust them off, remove them from the hands of the religionists and the academics and open them up. This is the Guru Gilis agenda. So they're exalted and they're far reaching. They're far reaching because, as I described them in the first video of this series, they constitute a cosmic event. They turn everything upside down. Well, actually, they turn everything the right way up because our ordinary understanding is what is upside down. So they're far reaching. And in this transcendental knowledge, all the Buddha countries are perceived. These are the Buddha lands. Again, this is a way of appreciating them properly. We are now moving around in perfect being. And the only way to describe it properly is to create the most extravagant mythology. The mythology of perfect lands, of the highest heavens, and so on. We can tune into this as enlightenment practitioners. So this teaching is for the sons of the victorious one. These are the ones that have captured or are moving in the spirit of enlightenment. They're not concerned with being a Buddhist. They're not concerned with having a daily meditation practice. They're not concerned with being a better person or changing society for the better. All that can be involved at some level if you want that, but that's not what it's about. It's about seeing as the Buddha sees. This is the option, this is the possibility. For the Shravakas I teach transitoriness. The Shravakas are the Buddhists. The Shravakas are those that treasure the Tripitaka, 
treasure, the triple basket of the Buddhist teachings. This was mentioned in verse 193. Those that are concerned with purity follow books and not the inner meaning. So that's the Shravikas and they can get the teaching on impermanence and all that stuff. And this is what's described in verse 202. The triple existence is transitory, empty, devoid of the ego. So this is a doctrine, a general doctrine, which Buddhists can think about and try and get to grips with. But I'm going to suggest there's a correlation here with what's taught to the Shravikas and what's taught to the sons of the Buddha of the victorious one. In verse 200 we're told it's pure, born of the triple emancipation and released from birth and destruction. In verse 202 we're told the triple existence is transitory, empty, devoid of the ego and what belongs to it. So first of all we've got this in verse 200, the triple emancipation. So the triple emancipation is emancipation from the triple world or the triple existence. And as far as these videos are concerned, the triple existence, the triple world, this is everything. It's the world out there, the so-called external world, world of appearances. There's the world of the individual that's apparently experiencing this apparent world, the external world. And this individual is composed of moods, mood patterns, mood habits. And there's also the reality of the world as perceived through these moods. So the external world is the world of conventional reality, the culture that we inhabit. And then we've got the world as we experience it through our moods. That's the relationship between the individual and the world. And then there's the moods themselves. So that's everything. That's the triple world, triple existence. And the emancipation means we're no longer buying into the cultural reality, whether it's religious or scientific. We are no longer connecting reality with our moods. We can step back from our moods. We're on the other side of our moods. And we're no longer getting sucked into any of this. So this is the triple emancipation. So the triple existence is transitory. It's not possible to get fulfillment from our moods, from the backstory of the world. On the other hand, in the realm of imagelessness, we've got purity, we've got clarity. The triple existence is empty. Again, because it's always in flux, there can be no lasting satisfaction. But as the insight of the wise in the realm of imagelessness is free from all that, is free from investing in the world. The triple existence is devoid of the ego and what belongs to it. In other words, it's got no independent reality. And in the insight of the wise, there is release from birth and destruction. Because once you realize there's no independent reality, nothing has an independent existence, you're released from birth and destruction, or at least notions of it. You're in touch with pure awareness, and this is what underpins everything. So in verse 202, this description of the triple existence is very similar to what are known as the, the Lakshanas, which I touched on, I think, in video 8. But we want to move from the conceptual understanding to the direct realization. And then 
we know the insight of the wise. We know that transcendental knowledge which is deep, exalted and far-reaching, which perceives all the Buddha countries. This is the teaching for the children of the Victorious One. <laughs>